Hi, I'm Vince, and welcome to our channel. Today's video is going to be about issues that we had when we traveled. Mainly the last trip, but also things, previous things. We're going to start with the front. The, the original battery that I had put in the van was a Optima yellow top, which I wasn't aware at the time, but that wasn't a deep, uh, they, what, what they call a uh, deep cell or a, a, a deep cell battery that's designed to actually draw down and then charge it back up like you would use in a trolling motor. The battery we were using was more for like starting up something really initially with a lot of power. So the fella at the battery store where I bought the battery, I had gone through two of the yellow top batteries and he said, you basically are using the wrong battery. You need a deep cell battery, which this is a marine deep cell battery. And he was gracious enough to exchange the battery that I had purchased with this battery. This battery was a little bit less expensive, but still, he, he exchanged it straight over. And so now I think we have the right battery. It's, it's only 500, it looks like it only has, uh, I think it's only 55 amp hours. It's not a really large battery, but we don't use a lot of power. So just be aware that that yellow battery, that's not the right battery if you're gonna use it for a, uh, as a deep cell. The next issue was the this happened actually on the first trip. We had put rain guards on and they make, they make a rain guard that tucks, tucks in. It doesn't actually uh, glue on. And I thought that was a better idea. Well, we lost them both before we got back. So they, they flew off the car. Be aware that the, the, the stick on ones are probably better. The next issue we had was the refrigerator on the last day of the last trip, our refrigerator just stopped working. Every time you plug the refrigerator in, it makes a beep. And on the last day, I plugged it in and it didn't beep. And so when we got home, luckily we had the ice maker, so we made ice and was able to keep things cool till we got home. When we got home, I this is it right here. We First, we tried to contact the manufacturer and of course it's made in china the no one got back with us there was only really email contact so i proceeded to take it apart and look at it it did have a an inline it does have an inline fuse which was not blown sorry to say i would have loved to seen that blown and i could have just fixed it but so beyond that, I couldn't do anything with it. It just, it was just, it was like you plugged it in and it was just dead. Didn't matter if I used AC or DC. Um, so when we, when I built this van, we bought, I only had 11 inches between the, the bed and the floor. <clears throat> so the only refrigerator that was available at the time was this one. And in fact, it still is the only one I know of that's that short. So for us, we just bought another one. And that one cost 170, this one cost 209, I think. So they're going up in price. Buyer beware that uh, if you buy one, there's probably no warranty. And hopefully it was a fluke and that this one will last, I hope. We'll see. Uh, the third thing was, if you see that it's in bed or uh, living room mode in the last video I said I was going to try to keep it in we were going to keep it in bed mode because it was too inconvenient to change it back and forth well it was nice in that respect but like because there was a fire ban we found ourselves in the evenings unable to sit around a fire and stay up later and so we found ourselves in the van at, you know, nine o'clock playing games or whatever. And somebody would have to lay on the bed. And then, you know, because of the way the seat, 
the way the seat spins around because you don't have feet space whoever sat here even had to put their you know she Tammy would have to put her feet up on the so it was it was terribly inconvenient to actually use it as a, a living space so when I got back I decided that we needed the bed to go all the way to the back of the van and I'm going to show you what how I solved that issue These cushions are, they were pre-cut for the other way the bed was, so we're just using what we have. But what I did was I basically cut the kitchen off. We had a sink right here and we never used it. We never used the sink. We, we stored things in it, we put things in it. It was basically a place for the faucets to be. Well, I had to move the faucet so this is actually our fresh water faucet now. It doesn't have a sink under it. It does have a adjustable spigot that goes up and down also. And it goes high enough to put a gallon jug under it. And the way we almost exclusively used the water was we would fill up one gallon jugs and use that to fill our drinks. And then when it came to the coffee, I can actually lift this up and actually fill this direct the button to turn on the water is right there I moved it to the so basically you don't have a sink you've just got a, a water spigot the other thing was the shower issue so now what I've done is I've run the shower water up here and when you want to do the shower you actually have to take and lay the shower unit it's a camping unit that we have and you lay it on top here you plug it in and then you can take your shower and here's the switch to turn it on. So by cutting this off and still using the swing out, I'm able to make, and then I, what I do is I got this little, you can lift this. And now, actually this provided these reflectors were a problem to figure out where to put them. I was always putting them under the bed. Well, this new compartment that I created actually made a great place to put all the reflectors. And you can see we've got our stove still in there. We still got the levelers, we've got the uh, tent, solo stove. So I'm still able to pack almost everything I had before. The only thing I lost was the sink, which I didn't really even need. And you can see how convenient, how convenient that is. And then you, your reflectors can just go, you know, right in there on top. And then I really didn't lose that much space. So we still... And now the advantage is we always have a bed. And... It's convenient. It gives us a place to sit where we can actually take advantage of the spin around front seat. So, you know, I didn't think it was so important to have a place to just be able to sit, but it really was important. Tammy and I found out really quickly that only having a bed didn't work. So this was, this was the fix and it worked great. I can't wait to go try it. We're going, uh, the next trip is there's, uh, it's called Adventure Van Expo which is the 3rd and 4th of November in Chattanooga, Tennessee. No, October. The 3rd, the 2nd and 3rd or 3rd and 4th? I think it's 3rd and 4th. 3rd and 4th of October. It's called Adventure Van Expo. So we're gonna go out there and just, we just figure since our van's called Adventure Van, we better go. So we're going to Adventure Van Expo. So thanks for watching and uh, maybe we'll see somebody out there.